Good morning, everybody. It's a lovely sunny day here. I think it's going to be a beautiful day. So we're doing advanced idioms and phrasal verbs. Uh, this is the 42nd lesson, and this uses a book by Ruth Gaines and Stuart Redman. It's from chapter 53, and the book is called Advanced Idioms and Phrasal Verbs, or Advanced Phrasal Verbs and Idioms, I can't remember. Oxford University Press. You'll find it easy, easily with Google. Um, so in this chapter, we look at some more formal expressions <coughs> And I'm not sure I would call them phrasal verbs, and I don't think they do in the book. They call them prepositional verbs. And I think the reason why is because phrasal verbs, when you think of something like take up, it can mean a lot of different things, yeah? And it means a lot of different things that are totally different from the verb take. Adhere to, you know, you can say take up, take on, take off, take in. They're all phrasal verbs, but you don't really get adhere on, adhere with. And you only really get adhere to. And so let's call these prepositional verbs rather than phrasal verbs, because adhere to means stick to. And, and adhe when you adhere to something, I mean, adhere means stick. Adhesive is glue. <laughs> and so we're using it in the typical meaning of the word. And that's why it's not really a phrasal verb. And the same goes for most of the words on the board. So if you adhere to something, you stick to it, yeah? And keep to and stick to would be informal ways of saying this. And these are certainly phrasal verbs, yeah? You can say keep up with, keep keep on with, stick, maybe, um, stick by, stick. There are a lot of different ones with, uh, you know, prepositions that work with these verbs. But if you adhere to the law, you stick to the law, you are a law-abiding citizen. You abide by the law. So adhere to and abide by are the same, yeah? You adhere to the rules, you adhere to the law, you adhere to the agreement, or adhere to the terms and the terms of the contract, yeah? Something like that. So, uh, yeah, you adhere to something, you stick to it, you keep to it, okay? And it is formal, certainly. You often see this at work. Okay, if you dispose of something or somebody, you get rid of something, you throw it away. Yeah, um, now it might not be physically put something in the bin, like throw something away, because you might dispose of, um, oh, what else could you dispose of? Well, you can certainly dispose of people, meaning get rid of them, perhaps sack them, perhaps uh, get rid of them in the sense of they don't work for you anymore. So uh, you make them redundant or something like that. But usually you dispose of things, I must admit. You dispose of something, maybe you, your business doesn't need something anymore, and so you need to dispose of it. Now, it might not be easy to dispose of it. You might need to pay somebody some money. Perhaps you've got loads and loads of tyres, old tyres. You're in the car business, yeah, you're in the automobile business, and you've got loads of tyres, and you need to dispose of those tyres. And you can't just pay somebody to go and dump them in the forest. Well, at least that's not legal. You wouldn't be abiding by the law if you were doing that. And I saw actually somebody got uh, arrested just recently for doing exactly that. And I think he dumped something like 500 tons of tyres. It was a huge amount. And he tried to dispose of the tyres in the forest and then set fire to them. And of course, he has been arrested and he has been fined a large amount of money for the damage that he caused to the environment, I suppose. Um, OK, so that is dispose of something. Deprive somebody of something. If you deprive somebody of food, then you don't give them in any food. If you deprive somebody of the chance to do something, then you don't give them the chance to do something. So deprive somebody means not allow them to have something. And it's usually something that they need or at least will be good for them. You know, you don't want to deprive somebody of oxygen. They will die very quickly. And you don't want to deprive somebody of food or drink because, again, they will die very quickly. So this is a very formal way of saying that you didn't allow somebody to get usually what they needed. OK, so deprive somebody of something. And if you say he was a very deprived child, it means that he didn't get a lot of what he needed. So he didn't get a lot of good, healthy food. He didn't get a lot of love and attention. He was a very deprived child. OK, now, if you are a deprived child, if you have a very difficult upbringing, and don't forget that word, it's very useful. 
if you have a very difficult upbringing, you probably have to contend with a few psychological problems. Because if your parents neglected you, yeah, if your parents neglected you, or maybe it was somebody else, but I don't, I'm not sure, but if somebody neglected you when you were growing up, that means they deprived you of love, attention, care, food, water, uh, maybe medicine, maybe something like that. But that means they neglected you. And that means you will have to contend with a lot of psychological problems. So to contend with problems means to face problems and deal with those problems. And this is a very formal expression. You know, you might say our firm has had to contend with a very difficult economic climate over the last two years. I think most firms have had to contend with a very difficult economic climate over the last few years. Um, so because the economy has been uh, in, a, in, in dire straits, really, over, especially in the last few months, many companies, many businesses have had to contend with these economic problems. OK, and we've all had to contend with inflation, for example, all of us. We have all noticed that prices have been going up and up and up ever since there was a big free money giveaway. Um, I think it started in March 2020 in my country, but there was a big free money giveaway. And now we have to contend with the consequences, the results of that free money giveaway, because when you just print money and give it to everybody, what happens is you push prices up. And that means that we all now have to contend with skyrocketing energy prices, skyrocketing food prices. And it's all because of those two years of printing money and throwing it to everybody. And of course, this impinges on our finances. So impinge on means have a negative effect on something. Now, of course, all of this money printing impinges on your wallet, it impinges on my wallet, it impinges on our children because we're not able to buy them or to, to provide for them. That's a very good one as well, to provide for somebody. We're not able to provide for our children thanks to the uh, terrible decisions of the last two years. Yeah, we all have these, these uh, higher prices to contend with. And of course, they impinge on, this inflation impinges on our finances, on our wallet. OK, so they're all excellent words for sounding formal. Now, if you pride yourself on something, this means you take great pride in one of your one of your positive qualities or one of your skills. So you might pride yourself on your ability to speak a foreign language. Yeah. You might pride yourself on, um, it could be anything, on your culinary skills, on your cooking skills. Yeah, if you're a great cook, I'm not being honest, but um, if, you, if you're a great cook, you might pride yourself on your cooking abilities, on your culinary skills.